a very warm welcome to Morning Song. For the first time, we've got our choral scholars with us today, and hopefully they're going to be joining us on some Fridays so that morning prayer becomes morning song. So we'd like to welcome our choral scholars, Rachel, Charlotte, Alice, B, Rob, Adam, George, Jack, Lydia, and Elsa, and our musical director, Andrew Iris. Um, I hope you're all with us and joining us from various parts of the country and indeed part of the world. And today is Sung Morning Prayer. And the mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help. And sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song will we praise our God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And our psalm for today is Psalm 31, which will be sung for us by our choral scholars. In thee, O Lord, have I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me, make haste to deliver me. And be thou my strong rock and house of defence, that thou mayst save me. Draw me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. Hated them that hold up superstitious vanities, and my trust hath been in the Lord. 
be glad and rejoice in thy mercy. For thou hast considered my trouble and hast known my soul in adversity. Thou hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy, but hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. And mine eye is consumed for very heaviness, Yea, my soul and my body. For my life is waxen old with heaviness, and my years with mourning. My strength faileth me because of mine iniquity. And my bones are consumed. I became a reproof among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors, and they of mine acquaintance were afraid of me, and they that did see me without conveyed themselves from me. For I have heard the blasphemy of the multitude, and fear is on every side while they conspire together against me, and take their counsel to take away my life. But my hope hath been in thee, O Lord. I have said, my God. My time is in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Show thy servant the light of thy countenance. And save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be confounded, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the ungodly be put to confusion and be put to silence in the Let the lying lips be put to silence, while cruelly, disdainfully, and despitefully speak against the righteous. Oh, how plentiful is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. And that thou hast prepared it for them that put their trust in thee, even before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them privily by thine own presence from the provoking of all men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in thy tabernacle from the strife of tongues. Thanks be to the Lord, for he hath showed me marvellous great kindness in a strong city. And when I made haste, I said,
Nevertheless thou heardest the voice of my prayer when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth them that are faithful and plenteously rewardeth the proud doer. Be strong, and he shall establish your heart. All ye that put your trust in the Lord. Our first reading for today is taken from Joshua chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 1. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders and heads and the judges and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and the sons of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Zir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron I plagued Egypt with what I did in their midst, and afterwards I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. Then they cried out to the Lord, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and made the sea come upon them and cover them and your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam, therefore he blessed you. So I rescued you out of his hand. When he went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gigashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites and I handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land in which you had not labored and towns that you had not built for you to live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive yards that you did not plant. Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, <coughs> or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did these great signs in our sight. He protected us along in the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples that the Amorites had, who had lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, 
for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, See, this stone shall be a witness against you. It has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore it shall be a witness against you if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. Blessed are you, God of Israel, forever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor come from you. And you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Our second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, beginning to read at verse 41. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for everyone? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and prudent manager whom his master will put in charge of his slaves to give them their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom the master will find at work when he arrives. Truly I tell you, he will put that one in charge of all his possessions. But if the slave says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and if he begins to beat the other slaves, men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that slave will come on the day when he is not expected and at an hour when they do not know. And he will curse and cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. That slave who knew that the, what the master wanted, but did not prepare himself or do what was wanted, will receive a severe beating. But the one who did know and did what deserved 
a beating will receive a light beating. From everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the old God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. First Lord, let us give thanks for the many blessings of this life. Today we give thanks for the blessing of music and the voices of our choral scholars lifting us in prayer. And we pray for all musicians across this land and all those who, because of this time of lockdown, have been unable to sing in public. We ask for God's blessing and protection to surround them and to uphold them and particularly the choir of St. Martin in the Fields, our own choral scholars, and St. Martin's voices. We give thanks today for the day, for the beauty of the sky, for the air we breathe, for the water we drink, for the many gifts of creation that we so often take for granted. We give thanks for one another gathered here across the country in prayer. Lord, help us to see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray today for all those in need. We pray especially for those who are sick and still in our hospitals. We pray for all those who've had operations and surgery delayed because of this crisis. 
and are suffering because of that and are anxious. We pray for doctors, for nurses, for all those who keep our hospitals running, for cleaners and helpers and administrators. We pray for all those involved in transport here and around London and across our country, giving thanks for their dedication. We pray for teachers in our schools and all those who are working with our young people. And we pray for young people longing to return and worried about their education. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them and uphold them at this time. And Lord, especially we remember today those who are elderly, those who are infirm, those who are feeling isolated and lonely. We ask for God's blessing upon them and their carers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, in a time of silence, we bring before you our own needs, praying for God's love and protection. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight for peace and not to feel the pain, to work hard but not to ask for a reward for ourselves, only the knowledge that we are doing your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we pray for other nations of the world, for our brothers and sisters and neighbours in Europe and across the world, for all those parts of the world which are experiencing poverty and danger. We especially pray for the Yemen at this time, with the outbreak of this virus in the Yemen already suffering from poverty and from conflict and war. We pray also for Syria and the people of Syria. We pray for all refugees and those people on the move. We hold in our hearts and prayers all those from other nations who have come to this nation and made this nation the nation we all love. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless us all as we work together for unity, for justice, and for peace. O oh God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quiet. Amen. And the collect for today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to thank all our choral scholars from joining, for joining us from across the country to join in this morning song and lifting our hearts into the presence of God. Thank you all and God bless you in your own studies and in your own music and singing. Thank you all for joining us here at St. Martin the Fields 
for this morning prayer. We look forward to you joining us again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock for the meditation. Tomorrow morning it will be led by Catherine Juice at 8 o'clock. And on Sunday for our, our Holy Communion service from here, St. Martin in the Fields, with our preacher, Sally, who's going to be preaching for us this Sunday, and I will be celebrating. So God bless, and see you again. Morning prayer continues as usual on Monday at 8.30. Unfortunately, without our choral scholars, but hopefully sometimes they will be able to join us to sing again. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.